All right, and we're live here with Dimitri Giovanni Severlo. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. He's Italian, if you couldn't tell. Yeah. But gonna be talking about business. Let's see where it goes. Tell me, how boring is it to be an auditor? <laughs> A common misconception, actually, in our profession. Um, it's not boring. I would say it has its days, but I would say in auditing, um, especially working for a public accounting firm, um, there's a lot that goes into it. Each day is a little bit different. Um, you know, we're very client focused, so it's not just we are behind a laptop all day and we are working in Excel. So lovely things that seem boring, but um, there's a lot of excitement too. You know, every day is a little bit different. Working with a client presents a challenge and a great opportunity at the same time there. Um, as I think a lot of jobs do, but mm. yeah, I would say being an auditor um, at a public accounting company has, you know, it's mm. got to stay where it's not as boring as people might think a typical accountant. Yeah, he's being modest. He works for Deloitte, <laughs> a big four accounting firm, and one of the things we're going to talk about is getting into corporate America. I can't really talk about staying in corporate America because I left, but I had decent success there and he is as well. So touching a little bit about that, if you were to give someone advice about someone who's in college or even in high school who wants to go the nine to five route and work for a big four, yeah. or a big Fortune 500 company, what would you say is important? Yeah, um, you know, someone who's young, like you said, high school, college age, looking to come into, whether it's corporate America or a different profession, um, my two, I would have two big takeaways there. Um, something that I'm sure both of us learned, um, you know, going through college, getting that experience. But number one, networking. Networking is huge. So kind of break that down into, and you can elaborate maybe more on the entrepreneur side of this, um, but at least with corporate America, looking for a job, networking within the company, you know, it's not just going to career fairs, that's a big part of it, right? Um, but reaching out to people in the firm, reaching out, making connections, asking your buddies what they're doing, you know. Um, you never know what's going to come up down the road. Um, and I think from a college perspective, it's a great opportunity because at the same time, you want to work for a company, you want to be, you know, you want them to want you and you want a job. Um, but you want to work for a company that you also enjoy working for. Um, that's where you're going to be the most successful. So I think. A big way to do that would be networking, um, at least from the corporate side. If you want to elaborate, maybe on the entrepreneurial side a little bit, I'm sure you can yeah. have some highlights to that. Well, my job is to meet people. Yeah. Like, that is, I keep hearing in the entrepreneurial world how there's the big dollar items, you know, for a real estate agent, it's meeting people. Yeah. Like, doing my accounting or designing my website is not driving the, the dollars. At the end of the day, meeting people is driving the dollars. So networking and naturally I would say I'm an introvert but we force ourselves to become an extrovert over the years I would agree with that anyone that knows me yourself included knows yeah I like to be I can be a shy person quiet person but um, you need to break out of that shell once in a while um, doesn't have to go full you know extrovert all the time um, in terms of like going out or things like that but when you're in the right setting um, Making the most of that, making the most of that out of every conversation is super important. Yeah, I will say this. One thing that still is a switch in my mind, which can be applied to corporate America or 9 to 5, especially in 9 to 5, is not seeing what someone can give to you, but like what value you can bring to them. So in my case, it is how can I make the process of buying a home easier or how can I you know, provide value to people who are watching. Right. At the end of the day, people don't care about you. People don't care about me. It's about what they get from you. It might be a tough way to look at it, but it's just how humans are. Mm. I think that's a good point. Um, and I'll kind of bring it to my second point that I was going to bring up in terms of advice, um, especially for young professionals or, or students at the time. Um, providing value, right? And owning everything that you do. And what I mean by that is nothing's too small of a task, right? Nothing's too small of a job opportunity. Um, I'll give you a personal example. So as Zach mentioned, I work for a public accounting company. I majored in accounting. Um, and right before I got offered my offer in college, 
Um, you know, I went through interviews with Deloitte and other companies. And one thing that was on my resume was a valet attendant in high school, right? And I just put it on there because it was job experience. I got exposure to different things. Um, and it came up in three of my interviews. So with Deloitte being one of them and also two others. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, you know, I'm interning for accounting jobs. I'm interning for these corporate roles. Why are you asking me about a job I did in high school? And I think, you know, it's a great question and great point that you brought up in terms of providing value with um, nothing's too small, right? So it's, and it's how you spin a lot of things. So, you know, for that valet job, I got customer service um, experience. You know, I got um, to work in difficult, like high pressure situations when it was busy, some, something like that, right? And that's kind of what I presented in my interviews. Um, and I bring that to the job as well, right? So. You know, being a first year associate and going into my second year now, um, you don't have the most glamorous tasks all the time, right? You kind of get the low man, as I'm sure you kind of experience as well in your short term in corporate America. But <laughs> it's how you spin it, and you never know those connections and those tasks that you do. Um, you know, providing the smallest value goes a long way, especially, um, you know, when you're working with others. Um, you know, now being in auditing. You've always been someone who's like attentive to the details. Yeah. And obviously, you have to be. Being an accounting major, being working in Deloitte, mm -hmm. how'd you say being detail oriented translates into other areas of your life? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so from a work perspective, I mean, I always have a, a list, right? If you want to call it a list, a schedule, um, you know, a to do list, a task list, and I kind of carry that over. Um, myself included, um, I like to have a somewhat of a schedule throughout my day, um, and that's kind of how I carry it over. And then, um, you know, going off of that, um, but providing that in other areas, like you said. So, you know, one of the things like working out. Um, so I'll have a schedule going to workouts. No, not everything that I'm going to do, but I kind of like to prepare ahead of time, um, kind of have an understanding of you know kind of what I want to get done uh, whether you know big example for me would be working out um, but going out meeting new people whatever it is um, I don't know I'd like to have that detail I am detail oriented so I'd like to have that going off ahead which is a pro and con right I think sometimes it's good to be just off script right um, yeah things just because you lay it out on a schedule doesn't mean it's going to happen like that so learning how to uh, go off the cuff a little bit and adjust is definitely a big part, whether in the business or any other area in your life, to be honest. That's what I find fascinating about business is like, it's such a microcosm for yeah, life. It is. It's, and going off of that topic, working out is an area that we're both pretty passionate about. You know, you're training for, you want to do a marathon eventually. Yeah. You, maybe triathlons, I'm trying to persuade them to do triathlons with me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it kind of all stems from David Goggins and mm. Can't Hurt Me. Yeah. And Goggins, one day I will work out with you. This is happening. But how does this workout regimen and pushing yourself physically play into your mental? Because I'm always talking about it, but mm. I want to hear it from your perspective. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that working out, you know, whether it's long distance running um, or going into the gym and just you know, lifting heavier, whatever your, whatever your preference is. Um, for me, I started working out for physical, like for, you know, to be in better shape, to be healthy. Uh, but it's really transitioned, probably I would say 80% of it's mental now. Um, you know, I know you're a big fan of David Goggins, as am I. And, you know, one thing he mentions is callousing the mind through his workouts, um, which I've tried to really incorporate, right? So when you're pushing yourself mentally through a workout, it's not always easy. Um, you know, as I'm, I'll ask in a second, but I know you're going for a marathon right now, so I'm sure you have days where you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to go to the gym, um, but pushing yourself physically in workouts helps you in other aspects, right? Because there's always days at work that I don't feel like working. Um, yeah. But, you know, you kind of learn how to push through and uh, come out on the other side. So i kind of let you elaborate, and I'll have a question for you in terms of, you know, you're preparing for a marathon now in a couple months here. Um, you know, what do you, you know, how are you transitioning from that marathon into more of that business side? Like, what are you taking from your experiences there and bringing it into real estate and other areas of your life? 
I would say that, I don't know about you, mm. do you ever get mad at yourself? Just like how you are? All this, yeah, <laughs> quite frequently. Yeah, I'm the same way. And I ask that because I know we're very similar in that way. Mm. So for me, doing these things like triathlons or marathons, eventually I'm gonna be the Ironman realtor. But that's gonna take some time, I gotta get healthy first. But to get back to your question, pushing yourself physically is almost like purging the negativity out of myself. I don't have time to judge people or hate people or worry about what has not yet happened. And working out that hard makes you present. And I struggle with being present. And how it translates to business is there are times where you saw today, by the way, he helped me out with my first open house today. And there are many times where things might not go according to plan. Kind of touch on how he said to be able to adapt happened today and being able to go through these workouts where you're nine miles in of a 10 mile run and you don't think you can go further, your ankle's hurting, your knee, whatever the case may be, you need to be able to adapt and push through that and stay calm because you don't have energy to waste on getting angry. And it's the same exact thing in business. So I would say that business, fitness, spirituality, dating, everything is essentially the same, just in a different costume. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, you bring up a lot of good points there, but everything's trans, you know, can translate depending on how you take it, right? Um, working out rolls into business, business rolls in, like you said, to dating and other aspects of your life, um, you know, whether it's eating healthier, working out. Um, but I think one thing, you know, you've touched on maybe on a couple of your other videos, one thing I kind of want to get a little bit more maybe insight in, as you've mentioned, you're not in corporate America anymore, left a couple months ago. Um, so kind of just talk us through, you know, maybe that process in terms of maybe someone that, that doesn't want to go to college and doesn't want that, you know, nine to five corporate life or someone that is in it um, and maybe wants to transition out of it like you did. Yeah. Um, any pros, I would say, you know, pros, tips or just, you know, just your general mindset of going through that process. Yeah. I would say that I give corporate America a hard time. I do. There are a lot of pros and it makes sense for a lot of people because mm -hmm. Not everyone is meant to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Part of me wishes that at times I wasn't meant for it either, but I know I am and right. I, I have to do it. But if I were to do it again, I wouldn't change anything because yeah, we both went to Penn State. It's a great school, got a great education. We went to the big four. I went to a Fortune 200 company and we did what we needed to do. We did what was on the playbook, right. you know? But if I were to do it again, I don't know if I would go to college because School is not for everyone. I mean, it was for me. I liked school. I did well. But business is not like corporate America. I heard a great analogy. It was like, for example, Deloitte brings in your, your leads, right? Your accounts. Mm -hmm. And you manage the accounts. Well, in business, the people who bring in the fish make the most money. So business is all lead generation. It doesn't matter what business you're in. Like, say you want to start a CPA firm down the line. Yeah, you're a CPA. But your other job is a lead generation. Right. So I would say networking and just getting out of your comfort zone frequently and exercise ties into that because you're a lot more comfortable. But just being able to go about the lead generation yeah. and be comfortable with yourself. And rejection is a good thing. That's been a major shift in my mindset is rejection is a good thing. It saves you time, it saves the other person time whether it's business or in life. So to anyone who is thinking, sorry, that was a long way to go around your question, but to anyone who's thinking about skipping college and going the entrepreneurial route, what I would say is save your money. I had a good paying job in corporate America, I had a company car, I lived at home, I didn't have any expenses, and I knew I was gonna go the entrepreneurial route, so I saved mm -hmm. for quite some time. And now that I find myself in a situation where the revenue has not yet come in. Right. Presents some challenges that you're working through. Yeah, but the expenses are. So, being able to stay calm and stoic and giving yourself a window to take a risk. Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, you know me, I'm not gonna fail. It's only a matter of time, and I'm sure people who are watching are the same way. Right. You don't go into things half-assed or think you're gonna fail. So, biggest takeaways, know what you wanna do and save your money. That was a long-winded way of going about it, but save your money is equally as important 
as knowing what you want to do. Yeah. Um, I think one thing you, uh, you know, I can want to bring up again though, and one important thing I think you mentioned in that was about rejection. Um, something that I personally, just being completely honest, have struggled with, as I'm sure many people have, right? It never feels good to be rejected, whether it's going up to talking to someone, whether it's asking for something in a job, whether it's going for a job interview, right? It's never good to hear back, no, you know, we went with someone else or something like that. Um, but learning how to take rejection, and like you said, it's a good thing at times, right? Especially learning how to take rejection. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of that, especially in the entrepreneurial world, you know? You talk about networking and leads. Not every lead is gonna pan out, right? Maybe a small percentage, as I'm sure you can mention. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think that's a very important topic that a lot of people struggle with, and myself included. Um, no, just gotta I, get better at it every day. You know? I respect it because you and I both, for background, Dimitri here is my best friend. We've been very close for about like five years now, so we know each other well. And with that being said, vulnerability has been something that we both have struggled with, being vulnerable about rejection mm -hmm. or failure, because that was never our mindset. Coming from sports, it was never that we wanted to accept it. But rejection and failure is equally as important as winning. I would say it's more important than winning mm -hmm. or succeeding. You learn a lot more, but I'll touch more on the succeeding part later. So you saying that rejection is a big part of growth is important mm -hmm. because this might be a little off topic, but for guys, getting rejected by a girl is like the worst thing in the world. Yeah. The worst thing in the world, it <laughs> sucks. But the more you do it, you become almost numb to it, but it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing because you're saving your own time because it probably wasn't a match and she's saving her time as well or him or you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Learning how to deal that, deal with that, and uh, accept it, definitely valuable too. In terms of, like you said, doesn't never feels good going up to a girl and getting rejected. But if you can play it off point, and say, "Hey, no problem," that goes a way longer than making a scene or becoming mad at it. You know? Yeah, there are a lot of guys out there who get really <laughs> upset by getting rejected, and I get it. Yeah. But that does not help. But mm. we digress. Yes. It's. But tying that into entrepreneurship, back to your question, out of every 100 leads that I get, qualified leads, people that want to buy houses or want to work with me, maybe one or two will end up right. pan out. Yeah. Um, it's all a numbers game at the end of the day. Everything's a numbers game. Yeah. And if I were to get halted by rejection, I would go back to corporate America yeah. where they give me the leads and I get the accounts because in corporate America I was managing accounts, I didn't go out and find them. So I'm curious, I know knowing you, you want to eventually go your own way. Maybe start your own company, I know you, wanna, you love Deloitte, you want to spend some time there. But with all that being said, what are the steps you're taking to get to that route hmm. currently? Yeah. Um so, so I'm being fresh into corporate America, you know, I just started about a year ago, like I said. Um, um, definitely, kind of goes back to my two, two points, right? Um, I'm not really sure what I want to do right now. Like, I don't have a definitive plan going forward. This, you know, right now I want to start my company or I want to do this or that in terms of, um, you know, job-wise. But keeping everything open, networking um, is huge and just, there's ways to, I think, especially you know, in any job, um, if you don't know what you want to do, that's fine going forward, right? Like myself, I don't know where I want to be maybe five, ten years from now. Um, but continuing to learn how to grow, continuing, like I said, I keep going back on it, but I think it's such a big concept of networking because you never know five years from now, I might meet someone that completely unrelated to what I'm doing to right, doing right now. Um, but that person could play a big factor, you know, in five years. Um, I'm sure we've both met people like that. Um, you know, going, going to college, um, keep talking about like I was accounting, but I actually went in being an engineer. <laughs> that was a fun semester, as you saw. That was a lot of fun between yeah. school, um, getting bad test grades back. But the combination of me just not liking engineering, probably being first semester in college and just 
an adjustment, right? Um, but keeping those doors open, right? So went to Penn State um, because I knew I either wanted to do business or engineering. So not everything has to be closed-ended. Um, keeping those opportunities open. It steps that I'm taking now, just you know, creating creating connections within my own company, right? So um, you know, not everyone stays, but some people do. But the people that leave, they could be a valuable asset, to, you know, in the future. So doing that and then just trying to be the best version of myself like right now in the, in the business sense you know I just finished my CPA exam so within the next couple months trying to you know finalize that certification um, and then on to the next thing you know whether it's taking other courses somewhere else um, whether it's learning maybe how to code or taking another business course um, just to provide value to Deloitte and the company but also to myself just so I can be a valuable asset going forward that's a good point. Dimitri Cirillo, CPA, OBE. Yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. I think it's interesting. <clears throat> Being that we talk quite a bit, mm. from an outside perspective, what do you see me doing? I'll give it the same question and answer back to you, but what would you have me do differently going about my day to day and the way I go about things? Like, what would you suggest from an outside perspective? Because, as I'm sure you know, in your day to day, you become so wrapped up in what you're doing, yeah. it's hard to zoom out it and is. look at your overall life. It is. So from a third party perspective, what would you suggest for me? That's a barn bird. <laughs> that's a million dollar question. That's a good question though. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what we're always looking to do. Get better. Yeah. And don't be soft. Take criticism. Criticism can be valuable. Yeah. Especially from people that are closer to you. Right. So like you mentioned, best friends, but tough hearing it from some people, you know, friends, family, but um, like you said, sometimes you're too much in the weeds. We call it, at least where I work, sometimes you're too much in the weeds and sometimes it's really good to take that 10,000 foot view of whether it's a task that you're working on or your everyday life. Um, and I think something that both of us are working on, I think you've done a good job, but we get frustrated pretty easily, right? If something doesn't go well, um, but learning how to, Maybe not go about it in terms of like how I did in college sometimes and get really frustrated and mad and, <laughs> and do just like, just yeah. kind of freak out, right? Um, but take it with a grain of salt and see, you know, what you can learn from that. Um, I'm sure that's something that you're going to be doing every day as, look, you just transitioned to real estate and you just had your first open house, right? And then I'm sure there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of firsts going forward. So I think it's just something I would recommend and I'm sure you're doing it is just, Every day, you know, with what you do, just, uh, all right, let's sit down. What did I do well? What did I didn't do well? And then the things that you didn't do well, how can I improve on that and bring it to the second, you know, to that second time? That's a good point. I think one thing I've been implementing is David Goggins' after action report. Mm -hmm. Like military, I have a lot of respect for the military. I, if I wasn't so money driven, I would join the military. Yeah. But unfortunately, I'm addicted. Anyway, um, they have these after action reports where they, dissect what they did well and what they didn't do well. So on my calendar tonight is at 9 p.m. is the after action report of this week. What did I do well this week? Because mm -hmm. what you did well is important. Yeah. Build as, off of it. Yeah, as humans, yeah. we overlook what we do well. We yeah. look to what we don't do well. But going into what we did do well, what we didn't do well. So I think that is a interesting point. I'm definitely going to continue to focus on that. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. Um, like you said, I think it's good and something I should implement and I will going forward. I'm gonna take your advice on that. Um, scheduling some time though, every week, just to, for reflection, um, yeah. you know? And I focus a lot on the negatives in terms of like things I didn't do well, but taking time, celebrate a little bit. Small victories are still victories at the end of the day. And dude, big victories. I mean, you just got a CPA, that's not easy. Yeah. That really isn't, I would never do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I could, but I'll, I would never do it. Yeah, um, it's had its challenges. I, it's a, I call it a humbling journey. I learned a lot about myself uh, studying because every day wasn't easy, right? Um, I got some of it done before work, fortunately. And then I took my final two exams while working. So definitely not fun doing eight to nine hours a day of accounting and then studying more accounting at night. I would say definitely not my ideal day, but <laughs> we got through it. Um, 
and very shortly I can put you know those three letters that are valuable going forward in, at least in my industry no oh, it's any industry everyone's yeah. always looking for a good CPA he'll be my CPA one day when he opens his own practice but it's one thing I've always admired for real is you doing the work that you don't want to do mm. for me I glided you saw me glide through college I was a management major in the business school and we got a hard time because it was <laughs> the easiest major but I did it for a reason I knew I wanted to go into sales but I couldn't stand even in corporate America I could not stand doing work that I wasn't passionate about I did it I did it well but I didn't do it as hard as I possibly could I only do that when it comes to stuff I actually care about right. so for someone like you going through the CPA and Deloitte and busy, busy month or busy season. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do it. I, I can't. Maybe it's selfish, but I can't do work that doesn't directly benefit me or help my growth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's all how you kind of take it. Um, I mean, for me, going off the CPA, um, something I knew I wanted to get. You know, especially being in accounting. Um, and I wouldn't say like every day was, you know, oh, I got to do this. Some days were honestly pretty interesting. Maybe that's a nerd of me coming out a little bit. Um, but it's valuable, you know, learning about that tax stuff, learning about whatever test I was taking that at that time. Um, but thinking about how you can apply it going forward. So, yeah, not every task is going to directly benefit you. But um, I don't know. It's a, it's a good point, but... I think, you know, you just got to learn how to build off of it a little bit. So I might go back to work and do a test and it's not going to benefit me directly, but it's going to be benefit my client and benefit my team. Um, and I knew in the long run, doing a good job at it is uh, something that I'll look back and hopefully be proud of, you know, at least CPA and just work. And, you know, I think that's one point that I'll bring up is the team aspect, right? So whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working with a team in corporate America, you still have a team at the end of the day, right? So um, you got to do your part and, uh, you know, build off of that going forward. Yeah. No, but it is tough. It is tough. Some days, like, you don't want to do it. Um, but I try to I maybe focus on it too much, but I try to look, like, in the future and see, all right, got to do this now so I can get to here, you know, maybe – couple months or a couple years down the road you know you got to put in the time now it's a good transition is big believer in delayed gratification mm. big believer in delayed gratification it's everything whether it's investing business corporate America whatever the case may be with that being said have you given thought to where you want to be in five years ten years and if so do elaborate <laughs> a little bit um, but I don't like to tie myself down to one ideal um, so I don't want to say five years from now, if I'm not here, I failed or if I'm, you know, a different direction because every, everyone knows life happens, you know. Um, so we'll see going forward. I have ideals, nothing set in stone right now. Um, but, you know, like I said, just tr trying to focus, be present and have that delayed gratification in terms of putting in the work now. So hopefully it'll pan out going forward. Um, but yeah. I think it's good to have goals, very important to have goals actually, um, especially short term goals, so you, things to build towards, um, but I don't think you have to set yourself to maybe like long term in terms of like where you want to be all the time, but I don't know, you have a different insight, I know you're very goal oriented. Yeah, I think given that I've found my passion, mm -hmm. and that's a video I'm going to make soon, it's like, it's tough to find your passion, it took me forever to find my passion. But given that I found it, I know where I want to be. I know that I want to have my own real estate team. I know I want to have my own fitness team, right. um, social media team. Because I'm doing everything myself right now. And that's a beautiful thing because it gives me appreciation for doing the work. But yes, I have some specific goals in mind. But it all comes down <clears throat> to value. I mean, it's not about me. It's about my clients. It's about the people I'm serving. Mm -hmm. and. The more value I can give, the more value I get, because that's just how the universe works. And I know it's a very woo-woo topic, but it's true. And uh, for example, I want to have one million subscribers on YouTube in three years. I think it's doable. Anything's possible that you put your mind to. It's a very cliche thing to say, but I think you can do it.
Yeah, it's, and TikTok. <laughs> yes, please go, go subscribe, go follow. Quick yeah. plug. Yeah, quick plug, <laughs> quick plug. I made a video recently about going viral on TikTok and that's the biggest thing I would recommend to all entrepreneurs is, I'm very analytical. Mm -hmm. I pay attention, like, like you, to the details. And the details is that LinkedIn and TikTok have the most organic reach. So if any entrepreneurs are out there like, oh, where should I post my content? Those are the ones I'm focusing on. I'm sure it's gonna transition over the years, but organic reach is everything. There's no other platform where you could put out a video and go from 77 followers to 80,000 right. in three weeks. Yeah. It doesn't even feel, feel real for me to say it, but there's no other place that, that can happen. Yeah. So eventually when I bring him on as my CPA and doing the analytical stuff, that's a very important part of entrepreneurship, knowing what drives the business. So yes, I would say that uh, I have goals, but in the same way as you, I don't want to tie myself down because if I don't hit a million subscribers, or if I don't hit this financial goal, mm -hmm. I'm not a failure. Right. Like you've got to be kind with yourself, and that's something we both struggle with. It is, but it's a constant, constant struggle. But at the same time, just working towards getting better, getting better at it. Right. Every day. Um, I think something with goals that you know you can kind of elaborate on as well, but set high goals for yourself. So you said a million subscribers, right? But if you end in three years and you have 800,000 subscribers, that's not a failure by any means, right? So, yeah. you know, have these goals, but don't, I don't know, don't get too frustrated if you don't always reach the capacity of what you're setting. Because at the end of the day, those victories along the way, and I'm sure, you know, whether you gain a thousand or whether you gain a million, you're gonna learn experiences along, the, you know, struggles, lessons, and experiences along the way. Yeah, no, because at the end of the day, it's not about the number. A number is a number, whether it's money or subscribers. It's much bigger than that. Like, we're trying to earn a living, whether it's you in corporate America or eventually going out on your own or me in real estate or social media. It's about earning a living and providing value. The more value you give, the more you get. So, I, yeah, if I have 800,000 subscribers on YouTube in three years, that would not be a failure. Not at all. All right, one thing I did, I mean, call me off if you want to stay on it, but one thing I kind of wanted to transition over is, for anyone not watching, Zach's currently participating in 75 Hard. Um, go follow him on TikTok. He's posting about it. But, um, you know, kind of elaborate on like why you started it. I know something, you know, last six or seven months, you've really taken a perspective on bettering yourself mentally. Um, and for anyone watching, myself included, and you know, as you continue to grow you know, every day anyway, but how can we start in that journey? Um, you know, hardening, as you want to call it, David Gardening, hardening the mind or the mindset, but um, you know, just kind of what were the steps that you would recommend or that you took in your journey? We'll put it this way, in what is it, October 3rd now? Six months ago was, what, April 3rd? I didn't even put a YouTube video out at that time. I hadn't put any TikToks out, I hadn't done anything. And um, I was overweight, I wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. um, mentally, I wasn't meditating. But it's everything is gradual. Everything is extremely gradual. People get very, I was the same way, get very frustrated when things don't happen in two weeks or two months. But it takes a lot more time than that. Even for me, I've gotten, to where I want to be at this point in my life. But there's still so many things I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So I would say be kind with yourself. Like push yourself, be accountable, be kind with yourself. It's never too late. I thought I was 22 years old and I'd gone through some tough things, as you know, and I thought it was too late for me. I was 22 <laughs> years old, but it's never too late. Just A lot of people out there watching laughing at that right now. Yeah, but sure. I felt the same thing. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's never, even if you're 50, it's never too late. Yeah. So just be kind with yourself, know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what you, what you want to do, just try new things. I had seven or eight different business ideas before I landed on real estate agent. So it takes time, be patient, and um, hold yourself accountable. I'm a big believer in that. It's one thing to be kind to yourself, but it's one thing to be too forgiving. So, and be honest with yourself. What do you do well? What don't you do well? Right. So that's kind of the way I approach it currently. And things are always changing, so. Right, yeah, of course. Uh, 
good advice, something I think everyone can kind of do some self-reflection and get advice from other people. I think that's a good thing. I mean, I'm, we talk daily. You ask me for advice all the time on your, some of your things, whether it's small or, or little. Um, in college, we were the same way, whether it was just, you know, what we're going to do later, or like, you know, for an exam. Um, but having those, and again, it all comes back to, you know, making those good connections and bringing people in your, if you want to call it like your inner circle, um, that are like-minded like you. Um, That's an important you know, aspect, I yeah. think. We've both been surrounded by people, by people who are not like-minded mm. and um, nothing wrong with it at all. Everyone has different philosophies, but being in the same circle and arena as people who have similar goals or similar values and work ethics is extremely valuable because I cannot tell you how much time I wasted on things that didn't better me. Yeah, as all of us have, I'm sure. Yeah. And we, we learned it early because there's, I'm sure, someone older than us watching, like, oh, these kids are, you're 23, I just turned 24. Like, oh, they have so much life ahead of them. And yeah, you know, we hope that we do. Mm. But at the same time, we've also lived a lot of life and we've experienced a lot of things. So it can be a tough hill to swallow, embracing, okay, this is where I am, this is where I want to be, what do I need to do to get there? Yeah. What do you could do better? There's a lot. And, uh, well, let me ask you this first. What do you think you do well? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, I think a pretty, you know, going off the detail oriented, pretty organized person, right? So I have my schedule. I have things that I want to achieve. But at the same time, I think that's something that I do want to work on. Um, in terms of just pushing myself more towards my goals and just having those like I said, it's not, not that I want to tie myself down, but having goals to look forward to. Um, there's times, so I, sometimes I get so wrapped up in one thing, right? So for the CPA exam, um, and I kind of shut a lot of other aspects of my life out. Um, and something I wanted, not multitask, but be able to learn how to, you don't just have to do one thing at a time or struggle with one thing, but uh, going off your first question, but one thing I want to work on is that um, having different aspects of my life, but not shutting that one or two off just because I'm, I'm so focused on one. Um, I think, I think, no, go ahead. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. I think it's a valuable question. That's one thing I've talked about on different social platforms is you're a very ambitious person. Yeah. You have goals and you are a hard worker, so you want to achieve them. Mm. But one thing that we both struggle with is being happy. That's, yeah. that's, I've been better at it recently, but it's one thing we both struggle with. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, how do you balance your ambition and your happiness? Well, you got to find things that, that find things to do that make you happy um, and give you a, even if it's a small part of the day. So not every day is, is glamorous, right? But you know, for me, one thing that's that I look forward to every day for just a brief example is working out. So whether it's 30 minutes or an hour and a half, you know, whether I'm going on a run or going to the gym, um, learning things that are going to make me happy. So that makes me happy going, you know, to the gym or something like that. Um, but it's, you know, something I'm constantly trying to learn on. Um, do I do a good job every day? Absolutely not. <laughs> There's a lot of days where I'll probably, not that I'm not happy, but you know, I'm, I'm just so focused on something else that um, I almost don't allow myself time to be happy. If that almost makes sense, maybe in my head it's something different, but it makes sense. You know, it makes sense. Um, and something that I'm trying. Look, at the end of the day, work's important, or working out's important, or whatever's important to you. But you need to find things that kind of relieve that, right? So one thing I've really struggled with is stress. I'm always stressed out, yeah. um, even about little things. You know, I constantly overthink and play them in my head, and I probably make them into bigger things than I need to. Um, so again, another thing that I can I can work on. Um, but trying and having these conversations with you, or whether it's you know my family, um, helpful for reflection. Because sometimes I get so blinded. I put the blinders on, peaky blinders. Um, Michael, Michael Gray. <laughs> that I don't see everything. So 
And that's probably why I'm not happy all the time. It's just because I don't see everything that's in front of me that can make me happy because I'm so focused on one thing. It's a long answer, but no, it's, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned Pinky Blinders, but you remember in season five when Tommy says to Winston Churchill, he says, I have three gardeners, three generations of men who have no ambition and are who, who are happier than I will ever be. There is a cost for ambition. There is a cost. And it's something I struggle with every single day mm -hmm. is balancing that ambition, that discipline, that drive, that intensity yeah. to be the best that I can be with my happiness and my mental well-being. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's something a lot of people, whether they're entrepreneurs or W2 employees, struggle to balance with. So I think that you made a good point in working out. I look forward to that every single day. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, it sucks. And I don't love taking cold showers after pushing my body to my limit. Right. I would much rather be sitting on the couch watching Peaky Blonders. But it's the cost of being great. And that's something I know you want to be as great at what you do, mm -hmm. as do I. Yeah. So I think that I'm curious. For me, the people that have impacted me the most are people like David Goggins, Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. Ryan Serhant, Tony Robbins. I'm curious if you have those kinds of role models or people that you aspire to emulate and then put your own personal touch on. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Um, I think one name that stuck out and you know is David Goggins, at least for me. I mean, I know you're huge into him, but reading his book. Um, definitely changed my perspective on some things and I think we talk about it a lot it's not the most well-written book in terms of it's not Shakespeare or whatever whatever it is but JK Rowling yeah there you go big hair you got Potter fan um, but just being raw with yourself um, I think is one thing that he really focuses on and one thing that I'm trying to implement more um, other people though that's a good question um, think about that. Let me get back to you. Um, there's definitely a lot of people in business, but I don't know if I'm not like, all right, I want to be exactly like them. I think it's important to take different aspects of all your heroes or all your inspirations, whatever you call them. Um, because at the end of the day, you're different. So you got to learn what works good for you. Um, I don't know. I'll get back to you on more names, but that's kind of like... You brought up a great point is that yeah, you need to take things that you like about certain people. Yeah. Like for me, David Goggins will likely do far more physical things than I ever will. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who's more athletic naturally because he said he wasn't very athletic naturally. And right. I would, I would say that I am. But just picking different things out from different people. Like Ryan Serhan. Do you, do you know Ryan Serhan? I've heard of him. Okay. He's a little bit about him. He's yeah. a, like the billion dollar broker. He's a real estate agent. So I'm not I look up to him got me into real estate. Right. So I would say that for anyone who's watching, even yourself included, picking people out who you want to emulate, mm -hmm. not I, like not 100 percent, yeah, right, not right. replicate 100 percent, but things that you like about them. Like Goggins can be a bit psychopathic. Yeah, and I don't think I want to go to that distance, but he has a lot of valuable tools. Mm -hmm. So I think that role models, as kids we have role models, but as adults we kind of forget about that type of thing. Yeah, I think. I think that's a good point and probably why I didn't name, couldn't think of a name off the top of my head is something that you have people that you look up to, but um, in terms of inspirations of like, maybe like famous people or people in your industry like you have in real estate, um, sometimes I don't take the time to do that and it's never, you don't want to copy someone, but it's always good to like have something, have some inspiration, like you said, from different people. Have you ever heard of the topic R&D? Not research and development, but no, uh, that's what I would associate it with. Yeah, that's my so accounting. So R and D in the in the entrepreneurial world, world especially real estate, mm -hmm. R and D is uh, research. I think no, it's research and duplicate. Okay, I might be messing that up, but basically, it's essentially copying. Well, fact check. Yeah, someone fact check. Me. Someone hit me with that shit right now. It's essentially copying what successful people are doing and putting your own personal twist on it. Yeah. So for Sirhan. He's all real estate, and that's not all that I am. I'm sure that's not all that he is either, but I'm big into fitness, spirituality, and getting uncomfortable in every aspect of my life. 
but there are a lot of great things that he does and I copied his day-to-day -day schedule mm -hmm. to implement into my new real estate career. So I would challenge you to find people that, you know, you would love to emulate and yeah. people that you respect. And obviously Goggins is probably one of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll definitely do that. Um, some trial and error. Trial and error is valuable. Just because it works for someone doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. But like again, learning those lessons, being able to adapt and then being able to construct them so they are valuable in your life. Just because, you know, something works for David Goggins doesn't mean it could work for us. Um, no. But the high level of his thought of like whatever try to emulate could be a good thing. We just need to adjust and modify it in some way. Yeah. Uh, the final four questions for you. One, the most important quality that a business owner, employee, an executive, anyone in business, or just in life, what would you say the most important quality or trait someone can have is? Being able to listen and being able to be open about what they're listening to. Uh, quick example, you know, keep this short, but you gotta listen, whether you're working in a team, to your teammates, um, whether you're talking to a prospective client, everyone has needs, everyone has their own viewpoint on things. Um, so you need to be able to listen, take in what you're, you know, what they're saying and being able to apply that. Um, if I, the most important trait I have um, for anyone at any level would be the ability, ability to listen and be open with that. That's valuable because not a lot of people today are very uh, open-minded. Right. It's something that we all struggle with, but uh, I think that's pretty valuable. If you were to zoom out, we're all stuck in the weeds, we're all, you know, enwrapped in our day to day. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to yourself if you were to zoom out and see your life as a whole? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to yourself moving forward? That it's gonna be okay. I think sometimes I get so wrapped up into- it's Profound. You know, I didn't, Oh, I didn't do this today. Not in terms of like, because I, like I couldn't, I just, I, I didn't, I failed the task, right? Or I, I didn't do this to the best of my ability. Um, and I let it bug me for like a week. And if there was one thing, I mean, I'm sure there's tons of other things I could say to myself, but first thing that came to mind was, it'll be okay. Um, learn from it, do better next time. So, yeah. It's valuable. It's valuable. One strength that you do really well that you want to continue to improve upon? Um, I think being able to adapt to different circumstances, something that I don't always do, so I want to incorporate it more within my life. Um, you know, risks and changes I, I don't like, but need to embrace them more. Um, but I think once I finally do do them, I've usually been pretty successful with adapting and nice. you know, going forward with them. Nice, last question for you. Mm -hmm. One thing that scares you? that you know you can accomplish one day, but you're a little bit scared to embrace, what would you say that is? Taking a huge risk. Um, I mean, right now, maybe like, one would be like, you know, going out, starting your own company or something like that, right? It's a huge risk. Um, like I just mentioned, not the biggest person uh, when it comes to like taking risks and, you know, being okay with that. Um, but, Taking a bigger soon, hopefully, whether it's business or something else, and um, being able to accept that and go forward with it. It's good stuff, man. Well, hi. Zach Rocho, 001, the first episode. Been a pleasure to be a part of the first one. My best friend, happy to, for you to be my uh, first guest. Yeah. Continue growth from here. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, man. Peace.